Meg, what are you doing? And whatsoever you do, do it heartily, as unto the Lord, and not unto men. Arash, what are you doing? Whatsoever you do, do it heartily unto the Lord, and not unto men. Thank you for joining us this evening, and we are looking forward to having Pastor Stephen speak to us uh, during our personal worship series about work as worship. Good evening, church. Welcome back to our daily broadcast. Thank you for spending time with us. Tonight, I bring you the, the final message in this week's series, continuing our, our discussion of digging our own wells. And our focus this week has been upon personal worship. And tonight's message is about work. I thought I would start in, in the space that I spend probably next to when we were worshiping together in person, next to the church. This is where I spend the most time working. This, this here is my space. This is my workspace. Now, it looks a little different these days since we are in COVID-19. Uh, you see lights. You see a microphone. Uh, you see cameras are around as well. But this is, this is where I spend most of my time. In fact, most of my time is spent sitting right here, right in this chair. And, uh, in fact, I have a... A really comfortable chair because I spend hours in this chair. This morning when I finish videoing this for you tonight, uh, I will turn my attention to this screen and I will begin to spend hours putting together a financial report for the advisory board. Uh, I do WebEx meetings here. I do Zoom meetings here. And believe it or not, I, I did a lot of those virtual meetings even before COVID-19 because all of our staff works uh, separated, each working from our homes. We don't maintain a central office. And uh, a few months back, some of you may remember my, my, my sewer backed up in this basement. We had to totally redo it. The Lord was good to us. And at that time, I invested in a standing desk so that I could uh, possibly uh, stay a little healthier. So here's my, my nice desk that I can, if I get tired of sitting or my back's hurting, I can stand up. And uh, I, can, I can work here. And um, some of you may have a different context for your work. You, you, may, you may go to a warehouse. Or you may be on the road uh, driving a lot. Um, some of you may be working in a, an assembly plant. Um, some of you may be managing stores. Or you may be working within an office complex or an office building. And some of you may be looking at me going, okay, I thought we were talking about personal worship. But here's the reality, folks. This space here is where I do a lot of my worship. This space right here. Now, how is it that this space is where I do a lot of my worship? The reason is, is because our work is also worship. The question you have to ask yourself is, how is work worship? How is it possible that my work, whatever that happens to be, is worship? Now, some of you may say, well, Pastor, we get how yours is worship. We, you're, you're working you know, for the church, and you're, you're, you're doing work that is kingdom-related. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a concept that you and I have to get a hold of, which is this. This whole world is God's. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. From the moment we were created, we were created to be productive and to be involved in tending the world God had created. Now, sin has made this tending uh, laborious. It, it means that you and I now have to work with things like our backs hurting, and so we we have to have standing desks so that we're not 
hurting ourselves or maybe you're out working in the fields or maybe you're working construction and so therefore sweat is a reality or or maybe you're dealing with something like that but the reality is is that we were created to tend we were created to be productive and in a perfect world where that production that creativity was not cursed it was not under strain it was worship. And even under sin, we as Christians, our work is our worship. Now, here's the key question. Here's what I want you to think about. Here's what I want you to examine. Who do you work for? Desi presented to us at the opening of this series this week that our whole life is worship. And so I ask you again, who do you work for? You see, I got a news flash for you. I try to be a responsive pastor, but I actually don't work for you. Yes, I'm accountable to you. In fact, this Saturday I will meet virtually, first time, with our advisory board, and, and, and I will give account of some of the things that I have had to make decisions about as pastor and, and, and that our pastoral team has made together. And I'll do that, but I don't work for the advisory board. This isn't just a preacher asserting his autonomy. No, I would venture, venture to say to each of you that if you work for Christiana Hospital, you don't work for Christiana Hospital. Not as a Christian, you don't. If you work for a school district, you really don't work for that school district. Not as a Christian, you don't. You work for the state government. You, you really do not work for the state of Delaware or, or Maryland or PA or New Jersey. Not as a Christian, you don't. You see, we Christians were bought with a price. We are not our own. Therefore, we glorify God in our body and in our spirit, which are God's. Everything we do, Pastor Desi is exactly right, everything we do as a Christian is worship unto God. So the key question is, who do you work for? Because you see, you'll do things differently if you understand that your work is worship. You'll look at your finances differently if you remember that your work is worship. Oh, you see, I give of the increase that comes from my work. I give. Because this is not my own. I was bought with a price. Everything that I have, I came naked into this world, I leave this world naked. It is all His. Every piece of my work is worship. Now, I have a great boss, and so do you. This boss is kind and fair and generous. I found nothing but blessing working for my boss. And no, I'm not talking about Newark United Pentecostal Church. And no, I'm not talking about working for my father before I was the senior or lead pastor. No, 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 no. No, I'm talking about who your real boss is. Because when you understand that you're not your own, when you understand that you were created to worship God with every piece of your life, then it will become apparent to you that you don't work for the corporation that cuts your paycheck. No. No. No, you work for Jesus. And as you work for Jesus, your work changes. You see, I'm willing to do things differently because I work for Jesus. I'm willing to operate in a way that's different because I work for Jesus. I live and I breathe for my boss. It's what makes me an extraordinary worker. It's what makes you an extraordinary worker. You should be someone that when a corporation or a company or a mom and pop shop hires you, they never want to let you go. It's kind of like the Joseph story. Everywhere he went, there was blessing. Even when a tax came and it looked like there was a, a setback or there was a, a wrong accusation being made or there were 
There were things that were happening that shouldn't be happening still. <laughs> the next phase, blessing would come. Why? Because Joseph was blessed of God. And you and I are blessed of God. You see, you don't have to defend yourself on the job like other people do. You don't have to protect yourself like other people have to. You don't have to assert your rights the way other people do. I'm not telling you not, but you must first talk to your boss. As a preacher, I have taught many other preachers. As a pastor and a mentor, I have said, you cannot work for the church. You cannot work for the sheep. If you do, one day you'll get tired of the sheep and you'll have a Barbie. For those of you that don't know Ozzy, that means you're going to kill a bunch of sheep and you're going to have a barbecue. That's not healthy. You see, you can't work for the people you work for or work with the people you work with nonstop without finally having had enough. Some of these people are jerks. Some of these people are not fair. Many of them are not Christian, but you are. Your work is worship. This is why Sabbath is essential. You're supposed to be able to stop and you don't let anybody else determine how you operate because you work for Jesus. I remember my dad telling a story one time of he had jobs that he would do and then he would have to go and he would have to do these reports and, and, and go and see things in California. And so they would schedule them first thing Monday morning. And so my dad, finally, he'd had enough of it. And he looked at his work. He'd started coming to God. He'd, he'd learned to worship God and, and to serve him. And he looked at his boss. He said, look, he says, it doesn't matter whether I meet Monday morning or I meet Monday afternoon. You need to change these schedules and stop making me leave on Sunday night. I need to be in church. Some of you need to start looking at your lives and understanding that your work will be better when you rest and you've been, given, you've been given permission by your boss to rest. You see, your money is not your own. Your time is not your own. It has all been bought with a price. You are your masters. You can glorify him with your work. Now, when you think of how much time I spend in this space, you think about where you spend your time. And you realize that every moment you spend here, you can offer it up to God as worship. Every moment I spend sitting at this desk and looking at this screen, I can offer it as worship to the Almighty God. When I realize that this space, which by the way, I like this space. Some of you may be looking and going, oh my goodness, he's in a basement. Where's the natural light? Well, that's why I got all these lights. I can brighten this place up. I can do all of these kinds of things. But this space is my worship space. Every video I record, every decision that I make, every meeting that I hold, every PowerPoint that I build, every prayer that I offer in the midst of tough times and hard decisions. And we're in the middle of them. Be patient with us as we decide how we proceed. And no, I'm not going to operate the way the politicians operate. And neither is our pastoral team because we're not running for election, folks. We're working to keep you safe. We're working to continue to be the church. Every one of those, every moment, is worship. That's why all through COVID-19, I've kept on giving. That's why through COVID-19, I keep on working. I couldn't do that if it was just for you. I don't even see you now. You see me more than I see you. So how do I keep going? Because my work is worship. I didn't do it for you to start with. And I'm not doing it for you now. You shouldn't be building what you build and doing what you do for you or for your employer. You should be doing it for Jesus. You get to do it for Jesus. You're rewarded by him. So when your bosses are unfair, when things happen and it just feels wrong, take it to Jesus. Understand he has your best interest at heart. 
He will not fail you. He will not abandon you. He is with you always, even to the end of the age. So as we've been talking about digging our own wells, as we've been talking about this, this need for personal worship, even the act of sheltering in place is worship. Whatever we do, in word or deed, the Apostle Paul calls to us and says, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Why? Because we're not our own. We never were. Sin took us over. Christ bought us back. And now we are not our own. Doubly so. He made us every breath of life in my lungs came from God and continues to come from God. But my eternity lies in his hands. He purchased me. So my work is my worship. Everything I do. Many of you have even asked the question, some of you in, in contact with me. Pastor Steve, you mentioned to us that you're going to take a sabbatical. Or are, are you still going to do that? Yes, I am. Why? Well, the reasons I gave you haven't changed. In fact, they're even worse. <laughs> this season of COVID-19 has been an intense period for our pastoral team and for myself. Some things I can't really report to you right now, but when we come back in person, I will. But it's been an intense period. Why, why, why then are you going to take this sabbatical when we're in the midst of this? Because it's what he's directed me to do. I don't work for myself. And it don't work for you. None of us work as Christians for anyone but God. What an awesome privilege we have. That hours and hours of what we do to provide for our families and to provide shelter and food and clothing for our families, God receives as worship. Everything you do for your, your children, for your husband or your wife, for your, for your family. Maybe it's a cousin or a, an aunt or an uncle or a, or a parent or a, or a grandchild. Work is worship. If you remember, you're not your own. You see, I try to be a good, a good steward of my finances, but in the end... They're not mine. And if my life is not my own, I don't have to own all of the troubles of my finances. In this season where some of you have had decreased work, now some of you are doing fine, and that's great. In fact, some of you might be doing even better than normal because of the line of work that you're in, and, and that's great. But whether you're abounding or you're abasing, whether things are full or whether they're a little more empty, it's not really yours. In whatever state you find yourself, worship God with contentment. Do not worry about tomorrow and the things of tomorrow. Today's evil is enough for today. Seek his kingdom first. He'll add everything you have need of. You see, you serve a good boss. He's perfect. He knows how to do all things well. So in this closing thought tonight, as we close this week out yet again, I encourage you that wherever you find yourself, whatever you find yourself, put your hand to it and do it readily. Do it enthusiastically, remembering that you're doing it unto the Lord. So whether you ride a desk like I do, or you do manual labor, whether you're working with your mind primarily or you're working with your body. Tonight I challenge you to be reminded that your work is worship. So let's worship God with everything in us. You see, this is why we don't have to panic when our neighbor has need of us to keep distant. Our neighbor has need of us to not come back together as a whole church because we can spread disease that way. No, we don't have to worry because we are not cut off from worshiping. Our work is worship. Everything we do in life is worship. So I encourage you tonight 
worship God in the beauty of holiness. Worship God with all of your effort. Provide for your family. Let them have food and shelter from your work. But don't forget who you're working for. Because if you and I can hold on to the reality that we work for God, not for ourselves and not for our employer, it completely transforms our day. And it allows us to begin to realize that every waking moment, even our sleep and our rest, can be offered up to our God. And that offering of worship will be sweet in his nostrils. Jesus, I pray tonight that you would anoint every single member of Newark United Pentecostal Church. And God, our guests that are on, God, I would pray that you would touch them. Let them have a renewed understanding that as they work, they work for you. And that's why everything's going to be okay. That's why they can do whatever they need to do. They can carry out their task and you will be faithful. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Receive our work as worship. And I pray it in Jesus' name. And let every house across Newcastle County and Maryland and Pennsylvania and New Jersey let out a resounding amen. God bless you all. I love you. Stay strong. Be full of grace, patience, hold on steady. We're going to be all right. God bless you. Good night. Thank you, Pastor Stephen. What a wonderful message uh, about personal worship in regards to work and Sabbath. And by the way, I love your colorful shirts. It is, um, it's always eye popping when you, when we ever see you on the screen. Um, so thank you for what a wonderful lesson. Just a quick few announcements uh, before you guys all take off for the evening. Um, listen to the Gathering Hub playlist. Uh, by now, you should probably have the top three songs in your mind from that playlist. And we are going to be publishing the top ten. Uh, we, please watch the Tim Hawkins video about the different styles of worship. And please identify that. Give us, you know, in our comment feed. Um, let us know somehow. Share it with us. And where you identify as. Um, and then don't forget to read your daily proverb reading uh, coordinated with the 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 day uh, and the chapter in Proverbs, um, as well as watching the beer group learning for August uh, to be entered into a drawing for $25. Um, hope you guys have a wonderful night. Please stay tuned tomorrow as we have our friend Friday and it's going to be a big event. And we are looking forward to a wonderful weekend with you. Thank you.